Good evening to all of my favorite human beings. Tonight we'll be starting with a really great book. It's actually one of our Battle of the Books books and it's titled A Nest for Celeste. I know it's backwards here, that's okay. Um, it's a really, really sweet book and it's just going to help us relax at the end of a day. It's really fun to read. We'll be doing two chapters every night. So you can sit back now, relax, get a snack if you want up to you, okay? A Nest for Celeste, a story about art, inspiration, and the meaning of home. Written by Henry Cole. Below the crackled and faded painting of a horse, beneath the heavy sideboard, under the worn carpet, and dusty floorboards of the dining room sat Celeste hunched over at her work table. And there we have our friend Celeste and she's working on something. Hmm, we'll have to see what it is. Chapter one, the basket maker. Ooh, that might be some foreshadowing, right? A giving us a hint to what's going to happen next. Something in the future maybe. She was weaving a basket, some blades of dried grasses. Above her head was a shelf full of the baskets she had made, some with dried wildflowers or colored threads woven into them. Several had long shoulder straps, which made the baskets perfect for carrying bits of food or scraps of cloth. All of the baskets were skillfully made with perfect knots and minuscule braids, minuscule, right? Really tiny braids and weaving so tight, the baskets could hold several thimblefuls of water or honey. Celeste's newest basket was going to be of a design she hadn't tried before. With a side pocket and a fold over flap to keep things from spilling out. Her nook was dim but Celeste was used to it. From her pile of dried grasses, she pulled another long blade and using her teeth and nimble fingers began twisting and weaving. Over and under, through, around, left over right, said Celeste to herself as the grasses sang. The blades smelled sweetly of sunshine of summertime. She wove them together as she pondered over where the grasses may have grown. She had nearly forgotten what a sunny day was like. She spent her time under the floorboards or upstairs in the dining room, furtively darting about in the shadows, searching for bits of food, plucking strands of horsehair from the dining room chairs, seat cushions. In the past, People used to use horsehair instead of like cotton or polymer to fill up our couch cushions, right? So this chair is filled with like cotton or like a synthetic material, but back in the day, they used to stuff it with horsehair instead. Kind of cool, right? So she was plucking strands of horsehair from the dining room chair's seat cushions or searching for bits of grass that had been tracked into the house on the shoes of humans and always at night. And lately, Celeste had been finding something else on her expeditions upstairs, feathers. This was something new. She had never seen any before. Some were as small as her ear, right? Others long and pointy. Some were soft brown, others vivid green, and still others brilliant blue and white. Hmm, I wonder where birds those kinds of feathers come from. If you have an idea of where those feathers might be from, give me a comment down below and let's figure it out together. More often than not, after a venture to the dining room or crossing the hallway, she would return with a feather. Finally, her paws a bit numb, Celeste tied off the last knot and sat back to examine the completed basket. <sighs> Goes quick 
quickly once you have a rhythm going, she mused. Her nose twitched and she brushed dust from her whiskers. She heard the deep gong of the dining room clock resonate through the floorboards above her head. Then she heard a rustling sound and she glanced nervously down into the darkness of the tunnel between the musty floor joists. Two gray rats emerged from the shadows and crowded into Celeste's nook. No, it wasn't living in the darkness under the floorboards that Celeste minded. But these two, they were a different story. Chapter two, Ileana and Trixie. So there we have our two rats, right? Remember, rats are always bigger than mice, right? So we have our tiny little friend Celeste and two very hmm, interesting looking rats. Okay. The first rat, Ileana, had narrow, small eyes, like a pair of black peppercorns and a tongue like a lancet. It's like a sword, right? Really sharp and long. Honestly, Celeste, another of your precious baskets, she hissed. Don't you have anything better to do than this silly pastime? She brushed the remaining grasses off the table and slumped in a chair. The other rat, Trixie, began pilfering Celeste's food stores, searching through her baskets, helping herself. Mm. Using context clues, I can tell that pilfering means going through stuff and stealing things. Both these rats don't sound very nice. Celeste felt defenseless against the two marauders who frequently bullied their way into her neck, into her nook, sorry, into her nook, ransacking and filching, right? So messing things up and stealing stuff. Mm. Hmm, bread crust, more bread crusts, Trixie said, her raspy voice wheezing between bites. This bread is moldy. Where are the good bits, Missy? Um, what good bits, Trixie? What good bits, Trixie? In an instant, the rat whirled around and nipped Celeste on the back. Celeste squealed. The pain was sudden and intense. You know what good bits, Trixie screeched. The really tasty bits. The bacon scraps. And the sausage bits. And the biscuit pieces. You've hidden them from us, haven't you? No, no. Honestly, Celeste stammered. Try looking in her bed. Ileana squinted at her. Trixie yanked the oily scrap of rag off Celeste's bed. Nothing, she hollered. There's nothing here. Well, then you'd better get to it, Missy. Take one of those baskets to the dining room and bring back something good. And mind you, no eating along the way. I'll smell your breath when you get back just to make sure. But I hear humans in the dining room. It's still early yet. Well, I'm hungry, Trixie snapped, and she made a sudden move as though she were about to bite Celeste again. Me too, Ileana chimed in. Just keep to the shadows. Keep track of where the food is falling and watch out for the cat. Celeste obeyed the two rats. She knew if she didn't, the shoving and biting and insults and bullying would only increase. She skittered down the dark passage. And that's the end of our second chapter. Oh my goodness. All right, what a cliffhanger to leave us on tonight. I look forward to reading the rest of this tomorrow. I really am. I promise not to read ahead. Um, all right, boys and girls, have a lovely rest of your evening. I look so forward to seeing you tomorrow. And for now, have a great night. Bye.